be 10% of my brain. So we're all experiencing about 10%, scientifically provable, of the existence. We, and then we got these idiots, these big fat thorns, these disease thorns. These are like the kind of thorns you heard about that give people this this flesh wasting disease. What is this? You know, where you're dead, it starts gobbling up your flesh within 24 hours. But that's what they're constantly injecting into us, just lying us and gaslighting the, the, the masses through mass media, the mainstream media, and parroting all this crap in the newspapers that I don't even read. And I can't even, I find myself yelling at the television when I don't believe the reporters are being honest. And we all know we, they're syndicated. They're all reading off the same script. InfoWars has shown that repeatedly where, look, I mean, they're all just reading from the same thing. It's almost verbatim. They change it up a little bit here and there, but essentially it's the same message because it's the message that guys like George Soros, and I, I don't want to get into condemning George Soros, but he's one of these diabolistic characters. And I say that by his fruits. I'm not saying that in a condemning, judgmental manner to any evil person that's left on the earth. We lost David Rockefeller a while back, but his deeds stunk to high heaven. But these people go the way they all end up going. I mean, you know, it, death is the, what do they say? It's the great equalizer. So the rain shines on the just and the unjust alike, and the sun shines on the just and the unjust alike. And like Isaac Newton proved that for every action, like a ripple in a pond, there's an equal, though opposite, reaction. So the good has a lot of good to come. The difference is it's not going to be a temporary good. It's going to be a permanent takeover. It's going to be a light coming on in a dark room that never goes out again. God took over like a diseased, cancerous cell. He cleansed, permanently cleansed, and reclaimed. That's the promise held out in the Bible. It's talked about as this renewal of all things. The return of Jesus, the end of the age, where the angels of God come in, this array of holy angels, of every type of size and God knows what it's going to look like but they're described as having different powers so some might be itty bitty and some might be gigantic so we don't know miles long I mean purportedly some of these things so we don't know what's going to take place but it's pretty phenomenal and that's the way God rolls that you know this is the kind of secrets that's been kept from us this whole idea that there really is UFOs I mean for crying out loud read a history book there, read the Bible. There's been there's been sightings of unidentified flying objects as far back as recorded history, depictions on cave walls in Pakistan, 6,000, 7,000 years old. So, yes, yes, it's all true. Why do you think the elite, the diabolistic ones, the, okay, don't want you to know that? Because knowledge is power. You'd be more ready. You'd be more ready to not believe anything that comes from these, knowing they control the mainstream media, the mass media, you'd, you wouldn't believe anything. So why would Alex pick out an article like that written by some brown-nosed, sycophantic, boot-licking piece of piss ant that's trying to feed his family, so God bless him, but trying to tell you that high housing costs are good. I mean, this is my teacher, Professor Thurza is her name. Thurza Andrew, that's one of a kind, right? Thurza Andrews. But she's a professor. And she knows just about everything about real estate economics. Okay, real estate is about as high a level as you can get. But, uh, you know, she wouldn't argue with me on these points. Yes, it's true. Poverty could be ended around the world tomorrow. But uh, they keep it in place because it, uh, they claim it spurs innovation. So, you see, this is how it works. So we get all these people that just keep parroting the same line, even the professors, you know, sometimes. And unless you call them as an individual, you stand, wait a minute, maybe I am smarter than my teacher. Maybe I do know more. Maybe I have an obligation, responsibility, and a duty to share what I know with this class. See, we all have that in us, and we all just need to tap into it and be, you, we can all choose to be the best friend to everybody. That's it. I'm everybody's best friend. I'm George Soros' best friend. Everybody's best friend. I'm Antifa's best friend. I'm Black Lives Matter's best friend. I'm uh, Colin Ka uh, Kaepernick's best friend. I'm the best friend of law enforcement. I'm the best friend of that, uh, the FBI guy that, uh, that was boring holes in the back of the sheriff of Vegas' head, um, you know, a few weeks back here, a month ago or so. Um, I'm the best friend of everybody. Donald Trump, Alex Jones. The man on the street, the bum in the gutter, 
That's my prerogative. It's yours too. But I know what's in my heart. And I feel tempted every day to not value it and to just say, look, concentrate on old number one. Join the rat race. Get into the dog-eat-dog social Darwinian system and get yours. It's all about money. You want to make your daughters proud of you? Just go make a lot of money. And I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm a defiant guy. And when I'm determined, I'm, I'm stubborn like a, like, a, like a bull, okay? And I understand people that take a vow of poverty, okay? You take a brilliant guy like Tesla, okay, that proved, he proved that electricity was all in the air, all in the atmosphere, all around us. And he proved that we could refine a method of pulling it out of the air and using it as we wish, for whatever we wish. Heaters, air conditioners, lighting, you name it. Okay, it was limitless. It was ubiquitous. You could re recharge the batteries in a car if you wanted to have all electric cars, but they'd be recharging just from the atmosphere. They don't have to depend on solar panels or uh, charging stations. Okay, this is the reality we could have. Tesla proved it. And guys like Westinghouse shut him down. So the guy died a pauper. Okay, most brilliant man probably all in all of history. Yet he died a pauper, so nobody had any respect for him. Oh, well, he failed. He was a loser, right? And all his technology is just, you know, by the wayside, right? Forgotten. But it hasn't been forgotten. No, it hasn't. And people know that lies are being told to us. They know that there's disruptive technology, disruptive to the profits of the oil company, for example. That's what we're talking about. That's why it's disruptive economically to fix problems. To have a guaranteed minimum uh, income would be very disruptive to the criminal industrial complex because crime would plummet. It'd be very disruptive to end extreme desperate poverty would be very disruptive. Even though it saves society incalculable amounts of money, much cheaper, so your taxes could go way down because a lot of your taxes go to support the criminal industrial complex. If one guy decides, look, I ain't living out on the streets. I'm going to commit a crime and cost the taxpayers $50,000 a year, me, you, all of us. So you look down on the homeless, just remember, they're not criminals. If they were, they'd be costing you fifty grand a year. Okay? So put that in your pipe and smoke it. The debt. You think the Federal Reserve ever wants a debt paid? No, they want it to increase in perpetuity. This is how they gain more security. This is how they cement and solidify their gains, their ill-gotten gains more. And keep people in perpetual servitude, slavitude. Slavitude, new word. This is how it works. How about the social uh, welfare industry that's grown up around this extreme desperate poverty? All those jobs. You understand how disruptive technology? So just intelligence is disruptive technology. Mathematics and logic are disruptive technologies to the current establishment. And Satan doesn't want anything to do with it. It's antithetical to what the will of these evil ones is, these diabolistic ones want. They don't want you to see clearly, to clear up the pond and say, all the mud's out of the way. Now I get it. I get it. They don't want that. They want to keep the waters muddied and bloodied for infinity, in perpetuity, forever. And they just want to gain more control, but they can't. They know the levee is busting and truth is overflowing its banks. And it's coming for the evildoers. So, you know, we got to wake up and smell the steaming pile of you know what. You know, I feel myself like the uh, Tesla of economics because I can prove to everybody that the wealth exists and you can pull it out anytime. And it goes right back in. That's it. Kind of like what John Keynes taught. So if you t look at you know what he taught in the in the in the best sense of the underst understanding of this this cash flow, the trajectory of currency, it could work. Just so you would see an ever declining cost of living, and that is progress. That is ever declining taxation. There's light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope to be free, not partially free, not select.